During the fighting on Earth, the Xeon forces found it necessary to have weapons of warfare capable of amphibious assault. After all, the majority of the Earth is covered with water, and major cities are close to oceans and lakes. Being space noids primarily, the designs of these mobile suits were something beyond peculiar. This husky fellow is the MSM-03 GOG. The GOG had heavy armor and a large reactor to power its megaparticle cannons mounted in its stomach. While it was a fearsome machine, it lacked cooling systems and could only function properly in the water. Next up was the MSM-04 Akai, which was mostly scavenged from Zaku-2 parts, including two Zaku reactors. Astonishingly, the Akai was a particularly good stealth and infiltration mobile suit as its heat signatures were shrouded, in spite of having two reactors churning away in its guts. It carried torpedo launchers and was fierce in hand-to-hand -hand combat. The machine has become something of a fan favorite in recent years, leading to variations like the Bear Guy. The most successful was the MSM-07 Zugak, which Shar Aznable had taken as his own mobile suit. Like the others, it carried megaparticle cannons and torpedo launchers, and was renowned for wrecking Federation mobile suits with ease. Sadly, once the Xeon were pushed off the Earth, there was no use for these machines in space, and they ended up abandoned. Machines such as the Zok and the Grabro simply faded into obscurity as they were easily dispatched by the Gundam. Now that we've taken care of these machines, let's look at the One Year War in totality. The One Year War was the single greatest loss of life of the Universal Century, and considering the amount of damage done over the entirety of the Universal Century, that's pretty impressive. With both sides losing half their respective numbers in the opening weeks, it's a wonder the war lasted as long as it did. Just to keep things focused in this series, and to close out Mobile Suit Gundam for now, let's look at the chronology of the One Year War. January 3rd, 0079, the war begins. Operation British begins three seconds later. The Xeon forces attack side 1, 2, and 4 simultaneously, and fire G3 poison gas into several colonies. This became later known as the One Week Battle, and at the end of the week, January 10th, 0079, an empty colony from side 2 is moved into orbit. Aimed at Jabarau Base in South America, the Xeon attempted to quickly cut the head off of the Earth forces. In response, the Earth forces launched its remaining warships to destroy the colony, and successfully diverted it. However, this sent the colony slamming into Sydney, Australia, creating a massive crater in the continent. Operation British ended in failure, but the Xeon were undeterred. January 15th, the Earth Federation responded to the Battle of Loom. Side 5 ended up utterly destroyed, and the mobile suit proved its worth against the Federal forces. Most of the prominent aces from the One Year War made their names in this battle, such as Shar Aznable and the Black Tri-Stars. Following this, the Federal forces and the Xeon saw that they had slain nearly one-third of humanity and agreed to a treaty banning nuclear, chemical, and biological weaponry. The Xeon had almost convinced the Federation to surrender, but General Revel, having escaped capture from the Xeon after Loom, turned the tide back. More importantly, the neutrality of parties like Side 6 was guaranteed, and colony drops were declared illegal. Allegedly, Revel's escape was allowed by the Zabis to give them a shot at the conquest of Earth, but reports do conflict. That following March, the Xeon dropped their forces to Earth, hitting Central Asia, North America, the Middle East, Australia, and Northern Africa. Within months, the Xeon captured most of North America, Europe, and Asia with little effort, cutting off materials and food supplies. The Federal forces were stretched thin, but remained unconquered. In September of that same year, the Gundam was completed just in time for Side 7 to get assaulted by the Xeon, and the first instance of intermobile suit combat was recorded on September 18th. The Gundam proved exceptionally powerful, and the new White Base made its way to Earth to try and assist the beleaguered Earth forces. The White Base, crewed almost entirely with civilians, made its mark once they landed in New York and took down Garmazabi on October 4th. The next remarkable battle was Operation Odessa, which threw the mostly mobile suit-free Earth forces against the Dugan Zeon. While the Zeon mobile suits inflicted heavy losses, they were still overwhelmed by the conventional forces the Federation brought to bear. By the time the Zeon regrouped and attacked Jabrau on November 29th, 
the GM was ready for combat. Well, the GM was outmatched by Xeon pilots. Once again, numbers won the day, and the Xeon were repulsed. Now the Xeon were on the back foot and ended up heading back to space, with only the North African division staying behind. Aside from Operation Rubicon, which will be explained in later episodes, fighting on Earth was over. The war followed the Xeon back to space, and following a battle near Side 6 called Balder Bay, the fighting moved on to the Space Fortress Solomon. December 14th saw the newly emboldened Federal forces bringing more and more warships to bear, full of GMs, as they prepped for an all-out assault on Solomon. Using a colony laser, not for the last time in the Gundam universe, they managed to inflict severe damage to the base. While losses were severe, the Xeon were defeated once again, and Admiral Dozel Zabi was killed in battle. Using Solomon as a staging area, they set their sights on a Baoku. The Xeon replied with their own colony laser, killing General Revel and Dagon Zabi at once, and wiping out a third of the Earth fleet. In spite of this, the Earth forces proceeded as planned and hammered a Baoku until it finally surrendered and the Zabi family was wiped out. The war ended on January 1st, 0080, and the newly restored Republic of Xeon was allowed to continue existing. However, Xeon's shadow loomed long over the colonists, and Earth and space would forever be at odds. Those living on Earth would start to become more elitist, and the actions of the coming years would see the rise of the Titans, the anti-Earth United Government, and many other factions. But it is here that we close the book on Mobile Suit Gundam and the 08th MS team officially. While there are many games, OVAs, and other words to examine still, the primary series and its sister OVA are now laid to rest. However, while the TV series is finished, there is one more important aspect to look at that was a contributing factor to Gundam's popularity. Join us next time when we take a cursory look at Gundam Plastic Model Kits, colloquially called Gunplum.